So then we're going to start and I'll just briefly talk about myself just okay. a tiny bit because most of you know me, but yeah, I've navigated for three other groups. So um, Val is my fourth. I've been with Masterist as a member for much longer. I've been with quite a few mentors <laughs> and a plug for Masterist. Honestly, I have seen artists that joined years ago when I did, and I've seen their work on Instagram over the past two years and a huge growth. Just a plug, but it's true. <laughs> right? Navigators? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, hi, Kim. Hey. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm in BC, just above the border in a community called Crescent Beach. And uh, yeah, now you know I'm a navigator and um, I don't want to talk too much about myself because really we want to see what Val has got to present today. So I'm going to turn it over to Val okay. and I'll spotlight her. It's been a while since I've done this. So this is kind of good practice for me. Spotlight. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh, great. And I just want to give another shout out to my studio mate here. Um, so I'm going to yell here for a minute. Hey, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> I emailed it as well. That might work better. So you're, oh, excellent. Okay. So she, hopefully she's popping in. Anyway, I, uh, I'm i happy to be here with all of you. And this, I think Denise might be coming in now. So um, yeah, I have a group starting up October 8th. It's a Sunday. And Sunday is a good day. That's the day that I'm down here working in the studio and I thought other artists are probably doing the same thing on Sunday, Sunday afternoons. So I have a little PowerPoint I'm going to start. And. I'm going to share screen here. There we go. And Denise, you may yep. want to turn the volume down. Judy, okay. you may Thank have you. to stop spotlighting um, Valerie so we can see her screen. Oh, okay. Oh. Thanks. You know, it's been a few months. Thank heavens you guys are all here. <laughs> oh, and also, I, I should say, Valerie loves questions. Just any time, yes. ask a question. She's looking forward to them. <clears throat> I sure am. Do I have that turned down enough? <laughs> um, maybe maybe a little bit more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. You're going to see all the inside workings. Are you seeing my canvas screen up there? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, excellent. I thought I had that all ready to roll, but here we go. It's almost there. So far. Here we go. Meet the mentor. All right. <laughs> so I am a big fan, huge fan of Sister Corita Kent. Um, she practiced her art out in California at Immaculate Heart College, and she was the head of their art department back in the 1960s. So it was a very, you know, groovy time, flower power, the whole nine yards. And she was more of a graphic artist and printmaker than anything else. So um, she would guide her students with 10 rules. And I'm kind of focusing with this on two of the rules right now. Nothing is a mistake. There's no win and no fail. There's only make. So that's one of the guiding guiding principles that I use because I, I just love her, her way of uh, thinking. Um, so I live in Midland, Michigan. And I'm a teaching artist for Golden Artist Colors as well. And I'm working in printmaking, acrylic, watercolors, and also in caustic. Primarily, my focus right now, as you can see behind me, are acrylic paintings. So I'm, I've always been interested in community. I've worked for several nonprofits in museum administration and teaching. And community of artists is so important for me. So... Uh, one thing you can do just for free is follow the Abstraction Now community on Facebook. And also you can listen to our podcast that I do with my artist husband, Armin Mersman. He's also one of the mentors here. Uh, Art Ladders, the Creative Climb. And uh, 
that that's we do it bi-weekly. It's a lot of fun. The the podcast actually keeps me on my toes because we every other week interview an artist and then on the odd week, we talk to each other of topics of art. For example, our last podcast um, that we talked with each other was on comparing yourself to others. And last night on the social media presentation we gave for Mastrius with uh, Sarah Scully, that came up quite a bit, the comparing ourselves to others. So that podcast addresses things like that. And then our most current podcast is with... Uh, Kristen Palana, and she's also a mentor here, and she's out in Malawi, South Africa, Southeastern Africa. This is my studio. So Fifth Street Studio is where you're seeing me film from right now. It's a, uh, it's in a business incubator. So it's kind of down and dirty. You can see I can get paint on the floor. Nobody cares. I love that. Our landlord really uh, embraces artists. So, you know, he came in one day and looked at the floor and he goes, oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> so, so I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about messing things up. And it's a nice, nice space. And then I also have a Zoom studio at home that I work out of. And that's very handy. And because I, I do online classes as well uh, with all of this. And plus, I'm just involved with lots of meetings. So it's kind of handy to have a situation like that at home as too. Here's some of my favorite things. My favorite artist, Robert Rauschenberg. I love his work. Um, I'm sure some, many of you are familiar with his work. He works a lot with image transfer. He works with collaborations. He was a huge community-minded artist down in Fort Myers, Florida with their community college. And he's he's a, the Rauschenberg Foundation now has grants for artists that will help with medical and emergency funding. So he's a big hero. And he also practiced his art at about the same time Sister Corita Kent did. Uh, my favorite color is golden pyro red. I love it. Use it for underpaintings. You'll see that here in a minute with my demo. My favorite habit is Morning Pages by Julia Cameron. A lot of my students know that this is super important to me. It, it keeps me on the right track and I've made headway, especially during transitions in my life, big time headway. Uh, my favorite process book, and it's an older book, I bet it was published in the, I wanna say 80s. Um, yeah, may, late 80s. Celebrate Your Creative Self by Mary Todd Beam. It's one of those books that are in a binder where you can lay it out flat. And her specialty, I'm going to call it, is composition. And she defines different composition uh, arrangements. And it's just, she's an abstract artist. And she's just very, very um, thorough and very thoughtful. And I just love reading that book over and over. And then my favorite medium, of course, is acrylic. Okay. Now my little thing, there we go. Okay, I believe in the growth mindset, not the fixed mindset, the growth mindset. And I think Mastrius is a good example of encouraging artists to have the growth mindset. So approaching our artwork with a joyful spirit of play that leads us to an authentic content solution. And I like to work with three words at a time. I blend them together and it becomes kind of a mantra for me. So my mantra for my abstraction classes and for my mentor group is process, produce, and present. I feel like Process is power, and you're going to see that in action here in a minute with my demo. I feel that producing quantity, and that's an ongoing, I don't want to, I'm going to use the word struggle, ongoing struggle for me, and I feel many other artists, is making the work, producing quantities. So when I write in my morning journal, I'm always striving to do that. And it might not be in the form of an actual painting, but it might be in the form of writings. It might be in the form of sketches. It might be in, in the way of 
uh, producing connections. That's all quantity based towards your artwork. And then finally, the present stage of the three word process is where you share it with others. You go to your audience, you take the leap and have exhibits, you get into galleries. That is an important component in being a professional artist. So that guides me. So this new mindset, curiosity, rules, positive energy, perseverance. Perseverance is a word that I heard my first year in uh, college for, for my bachelor's in fine arts. And it came from an industrial design instructor. He was our design professor for intensive for the summer. And I asked him at the end of our class, what do you feel is the most important characteristic that um, artists can have? And he said, with well, didn't even miss a beat, perseverance. It wasn't talent. It wasn't uh, creativeness. It was perseverance. And that's what I strive for. And then being a lifelong learner. So I'm going to be going through a bunch of tools here with you, uh, kind of categories that you'll see. And I'm not going to read through all of these right now, but you're going to get an idea of what I work with. This will just kind of give you a hint just by seeing a visual on it. And just as a review, the elements of art, line, texture, shape, form, color, value, and space, you'll hear me refer to those quite a bit when I'm uh, meeting with you all. I love to prepare curated content. I'm a former curator for an art center and I like putting combinations together. So that curated content then I share with, uh, you know, with the members of the group, with other artists. I share it on Instagram, I share it on Facebook, but it's introduction to contemporary artists. I like to show videos on materials, you know, how to use them. And then just things that pop up in my feed or things that I read that can further your art objectives. I'm, I'm just, uh, I love to collect things, almost like a scrapbook. I use a Pinterest board a lot for these things because I want to capture this content. And here is finally, if you work, it will lead to something. It's the people who do all the work all the time who eventually catch on to things. Again, that's Karita Kent, one of her 10 rules. And uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend studying her. And our word for the year is courage. And so doing this work and presenting your work, I feel takes a lot of courage. So I, I'm so excited to share that with everyone. Now I'm going to pop out of here and we are going to get on with the demo. Okay, so this should be a little different flow here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start the demo because I want the layers to have a little bit time to dry. And while it's drying, while we're watching the paint dry, I can show you some of these supplies. So let's get that first layer on and get my overhead. Okay, now I need to spotlight, right, guys? <laughs> yes. Oh, it's oh been there we go. Months. Oh, boy. Excellent. So what I've done here, this is a this is a handy tool. It's a little puzzle, really, that I'm going to be making. And I deal with little, I have little scraps of mat board, or it could be a heavy paper, maybe a, I, I prefer a heavy paper on these, like a 300-pound arches. Um, cold press paper would be nice, but these are just little squares of extra mat board. Down here at the studio, I do my own framing, so I always have these scraps laying around. And what I've done is just taped them on the back. You know, I could see an artist doing the same exact thing with uh, canvas boards, maybe even bigger squares. These are three by three. So I could see someone taking eight by eight squares and taping them on the back. And you're going to see what happens. Um, I'm going to do which my is my usual way of starting. 
And I have coated this with gloss medium. I did that because these uh, mat boards and paper can be very porous and I want the paint to flow easily on top, to come easily on top there. So I'm going to grab a paper plate here. We'll get this rolling so that can dry. Now, when I use this pyro red as an underpainting, it may be completely covered up in the painting, but I don't, I don't mind. I just want the energy to get me going of that color. And I'm going to use a pretty big brush here on this. You know, see how that is into proportion to this. That's crazy. I love big brushes. And I'm going to show you some more when I take the screen off here. And I'm even going to spray this with a little water just to make this part a little more spontaneous, give it a little bit of flow. Now this will dry pretty fast uh, because I have have mixed a little water in it. That'll speed up, speed up our time a bit. I'm working on a piece of brown paper that is about the color of paper bags. I love that neutral color. Get some interesting marks. We never know what might show up on a painting. There, I think as simple as that. I want a little airiness in this, so I'm not going to completely fill this all in. I'm going to leave it just like that. Now, I'm using a very, very cheap nylon brush here. I find that working in acrylics is very, very hard on your brushes. So I go with synthetic brushes. Um, if I were working in watercolor oil, I would go with a, definitely a higher price brush with natural fibers and a very fine, but there's something about acrylic that is just very hard on brushes. So I'm gonna wipe this off as best I can here and then put that right in the water so it can start, start cleaning up. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry and I'm gonna flip back to me and show you some supplies while that's drying. Okay, so, Let's go through some of these crazy supplies. And most of them I find at the hardware store or like Harbor Freight. This is my newest item that I'm anxious to try. Here we go. And it's a trowel and I'll be able to put product on and just drag it down. So excited to get to use this one. This is my newest acquisition in art materials. And so let's set that down here. Here I want that. Pardon? I want that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this is my sketchbook. And again, you're going to see how much I love um, that brown paper bag color. This is a 12 by 12 inch sketchbook. And I like the um, brown paper because it will really set off your sketch. So I found these on Amazon one day. Um, <laughs> this, this front, I accidentally thought it was a page and started painting on it. So now it's the new cover of this book. So I thought, oh, well, but I'm just about ready to get a new one um, because I use a lot of collage in it, like this one. This is an unfinished um, collage based on the elements of art, but I need to add white now to it. That'll be the next step on this. And when I add the white, let me get that page here. It will, well, it'll kind of go this direction. See how the white pops on that? I love white on that brown paper. So yeah, 12 by 12 inch. Amazon, 
It's under the scrapbook category. Val, do you do a sketch before each painting? Do you do that? I do warm-ups before each painting. And the sketch may, may relate, uh, but a lot of times it doesn't. Because once I go to a painting, I go to a very um, intuitive mode. So I kind of break away from the sketch. I don't uh, have the identity. Now, having said all that, with the ones back here that I'm working on right now, they are based on smaller mini paintings, eight by eight inch paintings that I've decided to scale up. So we'll see how that, that works out. I'll have to keep everybody posted on Instagram with those. <laughs> You'll follow along. Um, okay, here's another crazy brush. Here are two, doo -doo 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 -doo, two brushes. Look at that, that's so big. And this one, this one I haven't used yet. I'm, I just love the feel of it. Um, this one I can use to do a big quantity of background. Like if I'm working on a, right now, the largest I've worked on is 40 inches by 60 inches. So this would be a great one for that. These are both made by Liquitex and it's yeah. part of their freestyle brushes. And some of you may already have this. I was at a residency and the artist next to me was using this brush. And I was, I don't know, I must have been, she must have sensed that I was getting a little frustrated. And she just took the brush and handed it. She said, use this one. And it just opened up the next six paintings so much for me. So uh, yeah, Freestyle by Liquitex. Okay, another handy... I always keep a variety of palette knives handy, different sizes. I use metal or plastic, and I have a lot of them. One of my favorite brush sizes or uh, styles is the filbert brush, the rounded brush on top. So I have a lot. This is small for me. Usually I would go with a 10 or a 12. This I think might be a, oh, this is a four. This is small. Um, chip brushes that you could get at Harbor Freight or a hardware store come in different sizes. I buy them in the packs of 12 and just have them handy. I use foam brushes for underpaintings as well, or just laying in color. The reason I like foam brushes is I, they're a one-time use only. They're pretty inexpensive, but um, another artist told me once that the, they, the paint dries on here. And so instead of the paint going down the drain, it's actually turning back into solid material and that's a little bit better to dispose of. Uh, so I thought, uh, and then this is an odd kind of brush right here. This is by Dynasty. Every once in a while, I'll get a, a free sample from one of the suppliers and this was one of them. So this would be a wash brush that I would, this one I wouldn't use acrylic. I would use watercolor with this one. Um, I keep these in my bag of tricks right here, you know, popsicle sticks. They're good for ladling out my paint. Uh, they're good for mixing paint, especially in a big classroom situation. These are good to just hand out to everybody. I always make sure my X-Acto knife is handy. Pair of scissors, anything I can think that might come in handy. Q-tips for mark making. These are used by... Um, interior and exterior painters to create lines. These are very handy to have. And for my printmaking days, I'll use a brayer. I'm gonna use a brayer today in this demo. So we'll try that. And what else do I have here? Sometimes I'll make my own tools out of mat board. These become scrapers for me. And then I can just toss them. Try to save, uh, save every, anything and reuse it. Uh, I like to keep a set of some chalks and charcoal, um, pencils, different pencils, Prismacolor, white charcoal. You'll see that in action in a minute. Okay. So any questions I'm missing out there before I flip back and put another layer on this work? Once I get back to the painting now, it's going to be like a one-shot deal. I'm going to go all the way through it before I uh, 
come back to you all. Okay. Did you find it hard to go from small to as big as you're making it now? Oh, that's a good question. I actually fi find huh, that the, here's where I have trouble literally translating small to large. Like I said, with my sketches, I like to let it have life. So when I try, that's why this, these are going to be a challenge for me because it, I, I haven't tried where I've scaled up something that's already in existence. So I want to be sure that I make this totally unique from those smaller paintings that I find a little, uh, and I don't even know why, why I put that limitation on myself, but I just wanted to try that. But if I had my way and I had all the energy in the world, I would go large all the time. But I like to be self-sufficient. And so by going large, I have to kind of go with my car to see how big I can get in my car. So sometimes I'll go modular or I'll do that 40 inch that'll just slide in. So I, that's another limitation, but for me, it's a real pain to um, have to rent a van and do all this stuff. So I try to keep in mind my, my limits and work around that. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay. I am going to go back here to the overhead. All right. So this is starting to take some energy for me already. Um, and I'm gonna work with three colors. It's a very limited palette. So I already have my red in the mix. I'm going to work with a color called Titan Green Pale. I'm, I'm drawn to this strictly through taste. I love sagey greens. So that will be in the mix. The other color that I personally love, these are all my, some of my favorites, all of them, Payne's Gray. The reason I love Payne's Gray is it actually, it has ultramarine blue in it. And so it's almost like getting a bonus color when you're using Payne's Gray. This Titan Green Pale has titanium white in it. So that's like a bonus color as well, even though of course the white is very, very neutral. I have the high flow, uh, titanium white out here, just in case I feel that this needs some air as I'm going. So that's one of those elements, the element of space. I want to make sure I keep this light enough. So I am going to use my brayer on this now. And the color I'm going to brayer down will be the Payne's Gray. So I'll just, uh, I'm working with the fluid consistency, which is kind of my paint of choice. I mean, I like the tube paint too, which is a heavier consistency, but it's so nice to be able to just open this with one hand, pour it and be done. And I know that I can thicken this up with other thicker gels. So I kind of keep a huge inventory of uh, the fluids. Okay. So this is going to go back to my printmaking days. I'm going to get a little of this paint off of here. And let's see what we've got. Let's get some nice things going on. Okay. So right now I'm working completely intuitively. I like to think about diagonals. The composition I have going now is literally right now a cruciform. We'll see if it stays that way. It may not. Okay. I love this mark right here. I'm going to repeat just a little mark right there as well. Okay. So I've got my Payne's gray blocked in. I like that brayer. That makes really nice uh, marks. It does make nice marks. And I may come back to that. Um, 
my next mark I'm going to make is I'm going to make some lines with this particular piece. And let's go with that uh, green this time. And let's see what lines we can come up with. Okay. Now I'm starting to intentionally design this just from those two layers. So let's do a little repetition. I can drag that a little bit. Look at what a nice straight line that makes too. Without any fuss, no ruler. Okay. Starting to... Okay. Let's just drag some of this down. Okay, there we go. One mark will inform the next mark. So I'm going to go back to the brayer right here. I'm not loving that part right now. So let's see what I can do. Okay. So it's picking up that green and just softening it a bit. I like that. I'm gonna go in with some charcoal, which won't really leave, leaves more of a scratch than anything else. Starts to reverse a little bit. Oh, I like that. Okay. I wanna get more of an overall. Okay. Now, let's go with my filbert. Yeah, that is a nice green, really pretty. Isn't that an ice cream? Oh boy. They look especially nice together. Yes, they do. And let's do some reverse. Rinse this out a bit. Let's beef up that red a little bit. Man, I do, I do love red. I just love it. <laughs> just has so much energy. Okay, I've got to figure this out. Let me try. 
Now, what tool is that that you're using? This is my painting knife, my little palette knife, painting palette knife. And uh, it's amazing how you can scrape back out to that underpainting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. Okay. So, Val, if you did this on a thinner paper, you could then tear these up and use them in collage, right? You could. You certainly could. I'm going to, okay, you see the consistency of this? This is like ink. And let's see what we can do with that, introducing a little white in there. Now, the white can go different ways because it will reestablish negative space pretty fast. So it brings the air back into the painting. Done with Julie? Mm -hmm. How's she doing? Okay. What's up with her? Getting ready to go down down state on Thursday. Yeah. That's the plan. Yep. What were you talking about? They're gonna move down there, her and Rick? She Sorry. said she might have to move down there. <laughs> Sorry, I muted you. You'd have to unmute yourself if you want to get back in. Let's see. Hmm. Beam that back in. All right, now I'm not wild about those little drops. So let's get rid of some of those. I, li I like that. I like that. I think it's always so fun to watch uh, another artist's demo and the decisions that you're making oh. in the moment. It's just yes. uh, because they're different than the decisions that I would make in the moment. Oh. Like, for example, I love those white dots. Oh, and yeah. I love that you didn't because because <laughs> it stretched me to think, oh, well, you know, what is it that she's going to do with that? You know, it's just so fun to to watch process. It really is. I wrote down a quote. I believe it's the artist Sean Scully. And his quote was, why this and not that? He said he mm. kind of constantly asked that. Why this and not that? And it's kind of like that same question, the what if question, but I kind of like yeah. that play, why this and not that? Yeah. Because it, it causes you to bounce back and forth. The reason too, that I love working in acrylic, like right now I'm working wet into wet, which is fairly dangerous in acrylic because I could let this dry and then keep, keep all this without smearing it up. Like right now I'm getting ready to attack it again with the brayer. <laughs> and this could be a hot mess, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to try it. It's going to be one of those why not things. So go, um, go, go, by cheering me on. Okay. So let's see what happens. The great thing about oh, this, nice. it's not a precious panel that you spend a lot of money on. It's just that's right. your leftover. So you can play all you want and get I can play. for real painting. That's right. Yeah. I can play and play. I'm going to reestablish the cruciform here. 
Boom. Okay. What? I like that. Story. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do anything else. Very <laughs> nice. So now I'm going to show you. Of course, I said you know it's wet and it's kind of messy, but here is how I would use this. So in a way, I think of this as a sketching process. So I'm going to put my gloves on and I'm going to take this puzzle apart and we're going to examine it and see what might have a potential for a larger scale painting, at least the beginnings of it compositionally. So let's see here. I'm going to get this out of the way. Who's got a favorite square? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to see what these squares <laughs> look like. When, when I dismantle them, let's see how this will, again, this is going to be messy, but we like messes. And if I let it dry, I would definitely be doing myself a favor, but time is of the essence. And I don't think I can mess it up too much. There we go. Lots of little studies now to work with. Mm, like that one. Turn them upside down. Mm -hmm. Let's do this guy. They look so fun. It's so fun to do it. It's so fun. I'm a, you know, and if you're a collage artist, these things just they do open up the, yeah, the river here a little bit. Oh, I like that. Okay, so nine little minis. Mm -hmm. Take my messy gloves off and we'll put a little bit of a spotlight on them. Okay. So now <laughs> the little jewels. Mm. Mm. Cool. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, very nice. That is amazing. How fun. Just with that, with crazy math board scraps. Mm. Let's see what this one does. Get the light right. That's pretty dark. Mm -hmm. That one's a little harder to see, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's try this one. So, you know, people love little mini paintings. So I'll probably end up matting these up. Mm -hmm. yeah and then they oh, when that's you a spotlight them they look like they're a lot bigger they do don't they yeah they it brings the drama to it and that's what makes me think that they would be candidates for you know, a 36 by 36, 48 by 48. And you would just use that same process that I used with the brayer, the brushes, the scraping. The, the one thing you would do on the larger one though, which would give you much more history, you would let them dry and then you would go back and do that whole process all over again until you knew you were finished. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you've, there's a lot of fun things you could do with these. So I'm going to let those dry. And we'll get back to me and we'll talk just a little bit. I kind of hate to leave them. I like looking at <laughs> But I'll come back. I'll come back to open up the discussion here a little bit. So I see, Jill, you wrote, I love the idea of a warm-up instead of an exact thumbnail plan. I work intuitively as well, and it's a good compromise. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And normally, I would be doing this to music, but I know that this is going to go on YouTube. <laughs> so I didn't want to, you know, break the break the copyright laws on that. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it to music, you have that flow going on for all you uh, intuitive people back there. Um, so... Any questions at all? We're going to start uh, in just about a week now. So I'm so excited to get rolling with this uh, mentorship. 
it's, you know, a mentorship, it's different than a painting class because you'll be, and, and all of you navigators out there know this, it's all based on individual needs, you know, questions from the, the members. I learn just as much from, from all the members as they do from me because it's all new ideas and you blend them all together. I love when that happens. And if I can inspire people to create even more work and present their work, then that's that's really worthwhile. And it fires me up too. It keeps me keeps me motivated. Definitely. I have a so, logistics question um, yeah. about the the mat board that you use. Do you, do you yes? Do you find pre-cut mat boards or do you have a mat cutter in your studio? You know, I have a mat cutter in my studio. And that's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. I'm going to see if I can switch us to, is that showing gallery for all you now? Or does you it go gallery? I'm going to remove the spotlight. Oh, thank you. There you are. Yes. That way I can. Yeah. I, I wonder me. if a framer would be happy to give out little scraps if he, you know, you if know? you can have him do some of your work, him or her, and then, you know, as a favor to you give you a lot of scraps. That'd be fun. You know, I bet you money because I used to have a frame shop and I would, I would bundle up those little scraps and give them to schools. So if you hit that framer on the right day, you might walk out of there with a lot of little samples and just, you know, cut them into squares with your exacto knife or use them whole. You know, the one important thing I did was I did coat them with the gloss medium to make them less absorbent. Now, if I was working in a water media style, either watercolor or acrylic watered down with water, I could get away with not doing that. It would almost work like a watercolor paper, but I just like sealing it. I like having the, the option to go different ways. Yeah. I've done this um, with thinner paper too and just using blue tape but my new tape creation my new find in the tape world is post-it tape it's the sticky that's used on post-it notes and it's a one inch or a two inch big long tape you can I've been using that now because that blue color really bugs me when I'm using it on my artwork it it it, it kind of messes up with my mind on color selections so I started using this white post-it tape to um, seal off the edges of my paintings and it's working great. I use it on cradled panels. I'll tape my cradled panel and then pull it off. And then that beautiful wood is still pristine and ready to go. So yeah. That is that's, a great tip because oh, I that blue bugs color me. bugs me too. And the artist tape is way expensive. So I've been using that and like, ooh, yes. there's got to be a better yes. solution to that. So does yes. the post-it tape kind of peel off cleanly? Yes. But like it's a nut, it's the right amount of stick? Yes, leaves the right amount of stick. It doesn't pull up the fibers as as much as a blue tape would. Mm -hmm. And and really that blue tape is not cheap either. And post-it, mm -hmm. I have to be honest, it's not the cheapest thing in the world either. But I like that it doesn't pull the fibers up. Yeah. That's a big deal too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that tape, but I'm going to look for it. <laughs> yeah. And Watch it's on, it's on Amazon too. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say that washi tapes, washi tape also works. Washi tape is a tape that is made of rice, like paper rice. Oh yeah. Okay. And, and it's not as sticky as yeah like a regular artist tape um and there's different options out there like yeah some of them are really good and some of them you might find it's like oh this one is not sticking at all but oh, another okay. option so the paint doesn't go through is to add that gel medium and when you lift it it kind of like the paint doesn't go on there it, right to seal that edge with a little bit of gel medium and that washi tape that is a beautiful tape I mean yeah. I've always thought of it as a decorative tape I never thought Maya to use it as a functional 
you know, tape to tape off things. Yeah, I I just love because they they have colors and they have uh -huh. designs, and so I'm all about that. And I have tons of different kind of ones, and the mm -hmm. one that works best is the Scotch tape, but it's washi tape. That's it, but it's a washi tape. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. That's that's a good one. I didn't know that. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna look some of that up because that would be an excellent collage element. Do you use it in collage? Yeah, sometimes. Mixed yeah. media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just had another... you about... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I just had another quick comment about how much I like the um the idea of separating them first and taping the back of them and then and then breaking them apart. Because I've done the exercise where you do one big piece and play and then you take, you know, your your viewfinder and you find yes. positions mm -hmm. in there. But what yours does is it it removes that step of us deciding what composition it is and it just automatically gives you kind of some new directions to go in that you just it really takes the decision making out of it, which can sometimes be good to bring us out of our comfort zones. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It it takes that right out. It it does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. the more these are getting drier, the, to stand alone, they really hold up. That's beautiful. I love that one. <laughs> so that's a good point because I've done that too, the viewfinder idea. And, uh, but this just, it's fun. It's a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Val, that giant Liquitex brush that looked like a broom if you ever oh, use yeah. it, will you please video and put it on Instagram? <laughs> because I, I'm quite uh, enamored by that thing. I, I love this. <laughs> I really do. Um, and I'm kind of daunted by it because it's so beautiful. I just hate to mess it up. Mm -hmm. because I'm going to make you use it. But I will. I'll do a reel. I'm going to make you use it in one of our mentor group. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh i and think that's a great idea yeah Please, this will be good yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's beautiful that, baby <laughs> and the they other have questions? several several different this freestyle collection is really really fun in yeah. the tools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah well i don't we're just about at the hour so, yeah, I, so if you yeah. if you rewatch this on YouTube, I have to warn you, Val and I talk for about 15 minutes. Oh, I, <laughs> Just go past that. I <laughs> we were having that, fun. Um, <laughs> you know, Judy, maybe you'll hang on after. We might be able to edit that out. We'll okay, figure yeah. it out. I yeah. think I think the yeah, we'll figure yeah. that out. It was I, all I, fun. Yeah. Judy, I Judy, I think Masterius takes care of that before oh, it do goes they? on YouTube. So you don't need to worry. Oh, well, <laughs> I, you know, we were having a fun conversation. I think you could gain from we talked about Instagram for 15 minutes. Oh, <laughs> yes, we did. We did, we didn't did we? Because Val did a, a demo last night. I don't know if you all saw it with yeah. um so oh yeah. I Sarah know. Scully and they talked it was about social media, which I watched it and it was really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about that. And uh, yeah, it was great. And one of the questions was, um, was how long do you use, you know, Instagram during the day? How long are you on it? And who, who likes it? Most people gave it a three. I gave it an eight, but I wanted to give it a 10 because I love it. It's like going to an art gallery for hours. I just, you know, I, I'm enamored with, with um, scrolling on Instagram. It's my favorite thing, but most people gave it a three. And I thought, really, I love it. So that's I mean, what you're talking about. It it might be boring to others, but it was it was a safe conversation. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, should maybe. leave it in, Judy. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. they, maybe you will. Uh, you know, and and the deal last night, I was Sarah Scully was the other artist, and what I love about Mastrius is she was in Bali. She lives in Australia. She she recorded. She was talking to mm. us from Bali. I just love that international flair that we get here and opens up a whole new world. And then, you know, y'all start following each other on Instagram and Facebook. And it's like- you know, you so, Someone the other day, people. Valerie was telling me, it's like, it's so cool. Cause I had, we had some other artists that were from Australia and New Zealand yes. on panels. And they were saying, it's like, it's like time travel because you guys are 
there <laughs> yesterday, but we're here the following day and like we're talking so. this and like it's, it's, it's cool, right? It really yeah. is. I can't get over that part. I love that part. <laughs> Well, well, thank you also very well, much for coming you. Thank you for the demo, us. Valerie. You have all the faces. Oh, thank <laughs> Thanks, Val. It was fabulous. I loved it. Oh, it great. Great. I enjoyed being with y'all so much. Thank you. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye-bye.